and more, you're seeing candidates and causes organize events and, and people, volunteers, through social media. And that, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Next. So uh, why is it important for Democrats? Obviously, it's free advertising. We don't have a lot of money. We don't have the Koch brothers behind us. And so we got to use whatever we can. Social media is a really good way to meet thousands of people and organize them, you know, in, uh, for, Dem for the Democratic Party and for Democratic uh, candidates. Uh, it's also, um, you know, like from the Arab Spring to Occupy, those, those grassroots movements, those were organized with uh, Twitter and, and Facebook, and that's how they got those people out in the streets, and that's how they made history, pretty much. And so um, the Democratic and Republican parties both have been giving training on social media to their precinct committee people. Has anybody ever been to one of those trainings that the Democrats have given? A couple of people. Uh, I haven't been to them either, but uh, I understand they're pretty good. And so basically they're telling you sort of how to. And kind of what I was going to say today is what not to. You know, it's like, because there, there's a lot of bad behavior on the internet right now. And I'm sad to say that there's a lot of bad behavior by Democrats. And it's, it's bad for the party. And it's like, and so like I said here, it's like organizing and connecting is a good thing. So how could uh, social media be bad and ugly? Well, because we have uh, bad behavior, we have caustic speech, we have Democrats fighting Democrats on Facebook. We have Facebook groups that are being shut down, people who are being blocked, because they're getting all riled up. It's July 2015, people. It's not October 2016, you know. And people are super excited. And I was talking to my husband the other night about this. I said, well, what's going on? I said, I don't remember. I mean, in 2012, I would say probably most of us backed Barack Obama. So let's go back to 2008. And you know, we had Hillary then, we had Barack, we had John Edwards, we had a few other people I don't remember, but uh, I, I remember being in discussions and debates with people, but there was not this anger and just, you know, aggressive behavior that I see going on on Facebook now. And I, I talked to my husband, I said, what is the difference? Well, the difference for me is that social media was still in its infancy in 2008. You know, Facebook did exist, but it hadn't reached people like us. It was still on the college student level. You know what I mean? And so what you had then is you had people debating and discussing at clubs like this or, or you know, at the state committee meeting or something like that. And they, they might have gotten mad at each other and yelled a little bit. But then they went and they had a beer or they had a cup of coffee. And then and the discussion kind of fell away. Well, now all of those discussions are archived. They're all cataloged. They're all shared. The newspaper even quotes Facebook. I can't believe it, but the Arizona Daily Star will quote Facebook. So-and-so said on Facebook, they, they quoted Jeff Rogers once, you know, in the newspaper. They quoted me, Anvil Powers Hanley said on Facebook. I'm like, is that really news? To me, it's not. I have a journalism degree, but it's being quoted. Those things are being shared, and it's riling people up. So, next slide. So this, this, uh, this quote was from a friend of mine. He just put it up yesterday. One great benefit, perhaps the only benefit of Facebook is that it's helped me realize what complete idiots some of you are. And, so, and this is what we're seeing. This was actually pretty mild. But it, it's, it's sort of endemic of, of what's going on now. And it really makes me sad. And I think it's very dangerous for our party for this sort of infighting to be going on so early, you know. Uh, did any of you go to the PDA event last uh, March where we had John Nichols come to speak? Uh, John Nichols gave a very good talk, and part of it was about why people didn't vote in 2014. And he had a very good analogy. He said, he said well, think of the candidates like Coke and Pepsi. If, if every commercial told you that Coke was bad or that Pepsi was bad, by the end of the week, would you, would you buy Coke or Pepsi? No, you buy orange juice because you were told that both of those were bad. And the more, the more money, the more dark money that's put into advertising and political advertising in particular, the fewer people have been voting. So more negativity, more money, fewer votes. And I see what's going on on Facebook with the Democratic Party as a, as a red light warning signal. If we're pissing each other off and unfriending each other and being aggressive and bullying behavior, I mean, I, I, I deleted two people from my friends list on Facebook last week, longtime progressive activists. I'm co-chair of the Progressive uh, Caucus of the State Committee. They're members of my caucus, and I deleted them off of my Facebook page for bullying behavior. 
So this is not good, people. We shouldn't be doing this. Go ahead and fight the Republicans, but we shouldn't be fighting each other, okay? Uh, next slide. So, like I said, the good, the bad, the ugly, what I've seen, like I said, it's only July of 2015, and we need to settle down, you know? See, I see name-calling, taunting, bullying, spinning the truth, uh, exaggerated claims, and a lot of it is between uh, people who either support Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. And it's not good for either candidate, okay? It's not good for either candidate because it's not good for the Democratic Party for people to be, you know, hammering each other and, and you know, it's too early for that stuff. <laughs> and so, uh, next slide. So this talk is going to be, it's going to give you the top 10 tips for surviving social media and not losing any friends, hopefully, between now and November 2016. Next slide. So my first piece of advice is don't spam. Does everybody know what spam is? Spam is like an unwanted communication. We get a lot of them in our email, but you'll see it also on, on Facebook and especially on Twitter. There's a lot of spamming on Twitter. So people are putting, like for example, uh, the, they'll put the same uh, post up multiple times. And it's there. they think that by posting the same thing over and over and over and over again, it's going to reach more people. But actually, it just kind of annoys people. And then they say, oh, it's that guy again. And they don't even open it. So don't spam. You know, share a moderate amount. Uh, make sure you know you know what is in the post that you're sharing. You don't read things. Uh, but uh, spamming doesn't work. It actually it actually backfires. Next. Don't call people names. <laughs> I had somebody call me a grumpy cat last week, you know? It's like, no, I'm not a grumpy cat. I'm just trying to get you to settle down, you know? Why? So I put the uh, little schoolyard bullying thing on there because I see 70-year-old men acting like 10-year-old boys on Facebook by calling people names and putting people down. And it's just, it's not polite. I know that on the Progressive Caucus Facebook group, we have rules of engagement in a way. They're very uh, simple. But one of them is name calling. If you call somebody a name, you're going to get called out by one of the board meeting members saying, hey, don't, you know, you can debate and you can have a, yeah, have a lively debate without getting personal and without, without you know, upsetting people. It's, it's debate respectfully. Again, you know, you can have a lively debate. I, I think for me, one of, the issues, one of the keys is to stick to issues, okay? Like, for example, my, my husband and I are co-directors of Arizona's for a New Economy, and that's the public banking. And so we are we rail against Wall Street, okay? So Wall Street, you know, Hillary's connection to Wall Street is something I'm like, eh. and I was really glad she came out with her economic speech last yesterday and said that she was going to look for more regulation on Wall Street. Then I was like, hallelujah, you know? And, but let's look at the issues, and let's stick to the issues and stay away from the, the personality attacks or I see some people, um, progressives, and I consider myself a progressive, some people attacking Hillary for Bill Clinton's record. Oh. No, she was first lady. She was not elected. You know, let's stick to what she's done and what her record is and, and keep it civil. So debate respectfully. Next slide. So keep, keep it factual. This is the other thing, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever done a Google search for something and you come up with like a title and a couple of words and then when you go to that uh, that particular link, what you search for is not even there, right? Does everybody have that happen? You know, I'll search for people's names, the people will be tagged, I'll go there and I'll comb through the thing. It's like, it has nothing to do with John Smith, you know? How did it come up? Well, what people are doing when they're putting up, uh, you know, news or blog posts on the internet is that they will tag things in order to make it more likely that you're going to click on it and also make it more likely that Google's going to have it on that front page because almost nobody goes to page two on a Google search. And so they want you, they want their posts to be up at the top. And so they will do what's called search engine optimization in order to try to get that on top. And so a lot of times those sites though, they'll be what they call clickbait sites, where you go there, the headline sounds good, you go there, and then it's like all these ads, and you can hardly even read the text because there's so many ads. And so uh, when you're when you're doing a Google search, try to look for uh, factual uh, information and be careful what you share. Don't just share it because the headline looks good because it might not match what's in the text. Next, next slide. Check your sources, you know. 
not all sources are created equal, especially not on the internet, you know, and there's some people were, you know, getting all riled up last week on the caucus Facebook page, and I, you know, and the question was, was this thing that was shared right? Well, I think it's right, I don't think it's right, and so to kind of like dispel some of the anger, I posted this uh, meme, which is a, it was a picture of a fish with a horse's mane and legs and a tail, and the headline was, it must be true, I saw it on the internet. You know, and I was trying to tell them, you know, if, if, if you got us uh, something from Breitbart News, which is like the online version of Fox News, but worse, or do you have a story from the New York Times or the LA Times or the Arizona Daily Star or something like that? So, you know, keep, uh, watch, for, watch what the uh, sources are that you're sharing and make sure that they're factual and, and, and reputable and that you stand by what they're saying. Next one. So read what you share. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this also, where you know I see a picture, I see a headline, I see the promo on Facebook, and I think, oh yes, I agree with that. And in an instant, bang, I've shared it someplace. And it's really, again, sometimes a promo and the little headline and the picture have nothing to do with the story. And you've just shared something that you go, oh darn, I shouldn't have shared that. You know, so really, really be careful and read it, or at least skim it, you know, to make sure that you actually agree with it. Because sometimes I've read things, and it's completely different from what the headline is, or particularly the picture. Sometimes the picture will be something outrageous, and people react to the visual, visual and then go for it. So, don't drink in type. <laughs> I think this is a big problem. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I get up early, and so after 9.30, I'm not likely awake, you know? And so uh, I usually don't do much in, in the evening, because I also, I don't wear my reading glasses to watch TV, and so if I'm typing on my phone after 9.30 without my glasses, you know, beer or not, you know, I might not have a very intelligent thing, so I try to do things late at night, but I think there's way too many people who are having a few adult beverages, which there's nothing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned, but maybe you shouldn't type or comment, you know, under the influence, because I've seen things really rile up, and it's particularly don't blog. I mean, I, I've been a blogger since 2006, and I learned a long time ago, I can do a rough draft at night, maybe after a glass of Chardonnay, because I do have a tiny bit of Irish in me, but I better not post that, because I got typos <coughs> everywhere, and it might have weird sentence structure and stuff like that, so save a draft, don't post after some adult beverages, please. <laughs> okay. I had this one woman who was like a real, um, she was very belligerent, and well, there was one night where I was sitting uh, and um, you know looking at my iPad and watching TV, and I saw that this message that she had posted on my Facebook wall, and it was all these typos, and it was just, it was wacky, it was totally wacky, and I thought, she's got to be drunk. Right? And so I put on there, I said, I think you need a breathalyzer on your keyboard. And man, the next morning when she saw that post with a cup of coffee, she deleted it, and that was it. And I never heard from her again. She never bothered me again because I figured her out. So anyway, so I would say promote civility on Facebook. You know, I've, I've gotten into trouble a little bit on this, but I, I try to tell people to stick to the facts, find good sources, talk about issues. I think debating and talking about issues and without personal attacks is is uh, is great. You know, I think we should be talking about issues because that helps us find common ground. But let's be let's be respectful. And you ever seen that uh, bumper sticker, mean people suck? Well, anyway, mean people do suck, so don't be one, you know? Uh, avoid aggressive speech, you know, taunting, bullying. Uh, don't associate with those people. I, I went through my Facebook list, and I, I actually made a whole bunch of people acquaintances so they don't see everything I post, so I don't get people like the woman who needs the breathalyzer on a keyboard anymore. And so you can actually make your, your life and your Facebook life less stressful by sort of getting rid of some of those people, you know? If they, if they anger you, get rid of them. If they insult you or your friends or your candidate you love, get rid of them, you know? But, um, and also avoid, I mean, I can't believe the sexism that I've seen on Facebook, you know? Generally with the Democrats, I don't see a lot of racism or homophobia, but man, I see a lot of sexism. And uh, call it out and tell those people no hate speech, you know? Not even against women. You're not allowed to put us down either, you know? And, uh, and my last advice is take a break every once in a while from social media because it can be fun and exciting, but it can also be stressful and annoying and, and uh, 
so it's a uh, I, I suggest having device-free days. I mean, my husband and I, we've started having device-free evenings, you know, where we, we put all the electronics away, we plug it in and you know, leave them alone, and we sit out on the patio and have one of those adult beverages and talk and play with the dog or watch TV, and we're present with each other, and we need to have more of that time, I think, as, as people. It makes us healthier. And so, uh, you know, walk away from Facebook and, and, and uh, don't be one of those obsessive posters. And okay, sometimes I'm one of those people, but I mean, go outside and breathe and be with your friends and be with your spouse and your kids and your dog, and, uh, and it'll, it'll help you balance your lives out. So anyway, um, that is the, oh. So here's my, the next one is my goal for everybody. Try to get to election day without uh, losing any friends. <laughs> And so, you know, I think that should be a, our goal. Besides trying to elect as many Democrats as we can, I think that we should be respectful of each other and uh, and, and call people out if they're not and just try to um, debate, but, you know, not piss each other off. And so that's the end of my time.